Hi, I'm Roger. Hi, I'm Anastasia. And we are currently in uh, the Paspahay Town site at the Jamestown Settlement. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the history of pottery, um, the construction, and um, a little bit of its use in our cultures here uh, for our native communities. So today we've got some examples of some pottery uh, that you would have seen uh, historically. Uh, so we've got uh, these five pots here that have been fired. Uh, we've got this pot here that is unfired uh, to show the difference between um, the different uh, pieces after firing, before firing. Um, firing is a very important, uh, it's pretty much the keystone part of it. If it's not fired, it's really not usable. It's just pretty. Um, and so what you're going to see is for the historical part of our, our pottery here, um, what's really great about uh, clay in general is that it gets used around the world um, by every civilization. Um, and until you develop those different technologies like potter's wheel, every civilization and culture comes back to the same methods for working with clay, and that's using that uh, pinch potter co or coil building method. And so that's mm -hmm. actually what Anastasia is working on right here is a, a pot here, and she's using that coil building technique, uh, rolling out strips of clay or coils, adding them to the rim, and then blending it into the already existing piece. And that's how you would deposit the clay as you're going, mm -hmm. um, instead of starting it out with one big large hunk of clay like you would if you were using a potter's wheel. That's right. And so here we have a, a couple examples of some of the tools that you would be using for your pottery. Um, so the pottery here um, in the late woodland period, a lot of it is going to be texturized at the base with design work typically up more around the rims of the piece. Um, and that texturization can be done with really all sorts of different things. Um, here we have a, something as simple as a basic little corn cob. Um, could be taken and rolled into the sides of the piece of pottery. Um, you'll notice uh, a little stick right here, just like that, uh, being used for etching design work and even uh, using that as uh, the tool for adding the, um, the, next layer. the next layer. So kind of abrading the surface of your clay so that way it can um, stick a little bit better when you add that next coil. So these paddles here are also going to be great tools for adding either texture or designs to your pottery. Um, so I have one here and it has a couple here that she's made um, that are wrapped with a plant fiber cord. And that plant fiber cord just kind of gives that nice texturization around the bottom of the pot that you see here. Um, you'll also see that uh, the designs uh, will be stamped into the pottery. They will be etched into the pottery and sometimes impressed into the pottery. Um, you'll see paddles like this that have been carved and have the design work elements to them that you're just stamping right into the pottery, much like how Anastasia is using this paddle here um, to um, distribute the clay and shape it, but it's also adding texture to the outside of the piece. Um, it's also taking and blending those coils together as well um, to making sure that it's a nice sturdy uh, piece of pottery. It's helping, helping it with out that. a little bit too, thinning mm -hmm. the clay. Exactly, helping to thin it. Um, you'll see that um, with our museum here, we do use a purchased clay. It's coming uh, from a fairly local source, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and it's um, going to be more of that kind of red clay that we have pretty much um, here everywhere in Virginia. Uh, but historically, you'd be using river clay. And that river clay is going to be much more of a lighter gray, off-white kind of color like you see here. Um, and so... Uh, that quality of clay is, is, is really fine, wonderful clay to work with. It, it is very, it's creamy. It's, it's very creamy, yeah. <laughs> that's a, a great way to put it. It almost feels like you're, you're playing and working with fudge. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's a, a great analogy for it to give you that idea of texture of that clay when it's being worked. Um, you'll see historically, um, again, our communities are not going to be glazing their pottery. Um, it's not really something that was being done here. We don't really have um, a lot of those minerals that are right, being used uh, for that. Um, but you're also going to see that it's really not necessary for the way that our communities are using their pottery. 
um, as long as you're firing your, your pottery uh, to high enough temperatures to cause the ventrification um, in the clay. And that's essentially a fusion of the clay particles. Um, as long as that's been done, the, the pottery will hold, uh, hold water. Um, now there is different levels of that ventrification. Um, so if it's a, a very, very low temperature fire, um, you will see like a good example is like those little terracotta flower pots. Um, but you know, higher ones, you know, you'll be able to cook in them and all that stuff without any issue at all. It'll hold water it'll without hold water. seeping. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. The higher temperature that it's fired. And, and I, you know, I believe people have known this. They've been doing it for thousands of years. So mm -hmm. they, they knew what needed to be done to make the pottery work for whatever purpose they were using exactly. it for. Exactly. You know, especially exactly. if you're cooking, you know, it has to, it can't, you don't want to have a lot of leaks and you don't, certainly don't want it to crack. So it, it was very important to make the container uh, solid and make it to be able to stand up to the stress that it's going to in Absolutely. the cooking process, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another layer. I've mm -hmm. already gotten this one nice and thin, so I just take a, my stick, a very sophisticated tool here, and I just start scratching the surface, which is much like welding or soldering. You have to prepare the surface so that next layer of clay will, will stick to it and mm -hmm. bond to the, the rim. Well said, well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here is another example. So um, pottery itself is a life skill here. Um, it's just so, necessary yeah. for every, every, everything um, where you're cooking and things like that. But you'll also see for our communities here that um, while men are not necessarily always working in clay to produce things like cooking pots and things, that's not something that they're necessarily really expected to do. Right, yeah. It's not really a role that they're filling in in the society here for the most part. Um, but you will see things like clay pipes and things like that, that the men are producing. Um, you'll see uh, pieces of broken pottery, um, even, that are being used and are functional pieces. Um, pieces of broken pottery shard, if they're large enough, are sometimes being used for cooking as well, even though you're not capable of making those soups and stews anymore in them. Right. You're capable of using it for, for baking if it breaks right, for frying uh, and things like that. Um, you'll see that uh, in archaeological finds, uh, pieces of broken pottery that were really too small to do anything, they could actually uh, be taken and the men would drill holes into them uh, mm -hmm. and use those little pieces of broken pottery for weights for their fishing nets here. Um, so even though it may not be a functional piece of pottery like we think of it today, you know, after it breaks, there's, there's still use for those pieces. Um, historically. Right, you mm -hmm. see that again and again. Mm -hmm. Another really cool thing about the pottery here is um, our tribes that have been in this part of Virginia have been producing pottery for roughly close to 3,500 mm -hmm. years. Uh, mm -hmm. The pottery tradition is quite old here in Virginia and the further south you go the older it gets. Um, that's a, a really cool thing here and it's wonderful to see that um, even in modern setting um, a, some of our people from our communities here in Virginia are still keeping that cultural practice alive of producing this pottery. Um, it's, it's wonderful to see uh, that our communities have maintained and held on to that tradition and continue to perpetuate it, mm -hmm. even in modern setting. Mm -hmm. So they're producing, you know, things that are based off historical pieces, um, much like I did with these pieces here. Um, but they're also, um, working in, in modern setting, throwing uh, pottery on potter's wheels, not just using that traditional coil method. Um, and it's just a wonderful thing to see that our communities have not lost that part of our culture here. It's and I think that that's important because it, it ties together the history with, with modern people who still continue on exactly. in, in that tradition, making things that either are based on historical objects or using clay in a, in a way that a modern potter would, would do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and for our communities, it's, it's just a great way of tying and connecting ourselves back to, back to our ancestors. Mm -hmm. One thing that you'll see is um, the shapes of pottery uh, are one way that we can tell historically, um, you know, maybe where a piece of pottery was coming from um, 
what it was being used for um, and things like that. But one of the really cool things about pottery is people are people. And it doesn't matter what year it is. It doesn't matter what culture we come from. Things like design, patterns, uh, they're, they're attractive to us. We like them. You know, it's just a part of who we are as human beings. Um, and so even pieces that have been found, you know, modern, in modern setting that were old pieces, um, one way that we can tell where a piece came from or even, you know, not just specifically what tribe, but sometimes even what individual or, or family made that pottery is because of the design work uh, being placed into that pottery. Um, in the period that we talk about here at Jamestown Settlement, we're talking about the late woodland period. Um, and so with late woodland period pottery, a lot of the pottery is texturized um, around the base. You will see some that have been uh, varnished and made smooth, but a lot of them are actually going to be texturized. And that texturization can come from paddles like the ones that you see here that me and Anastasia are using. Um, it can be caused from corn cob like this just being rolled into the outside. And you'll even see um, our communities were producing their own cloth even 400 years ago and honestly hundreds of years before then. And taking a piece of plant fiber woven cloth and just impressing it, in. it into mm -hmm. the sides of the pottery. Uh, those are ways that you're adding texturization. But design elements are wonderful ways uh, for us um, to tell in a modern setting where a piece came from, uh, who, or at least maybe what family even produced that piece mm -hmm. of pottery. Expression, I think creative expression is always comes out whether, yes. no matter what you're doing, whether it's pottery or whether it's jewelry or whether it's clothing, People love to express themselves, and I think pottery, it's functional, but it's also a way to express your creative self, whether, Absolutely. You know, whether it's a texture design or whether it's an inscribed design or incised design. I, I think people just love tradition, too, and, you know, I, I tend to be repetitive in mine. I'm not very original in my designs on the pottery, but... Uh, it is, it's just one of those things that's sort of like my signature, I guess. Exactly. You know? And it, that literally just goes back to point, yeah. the very point that we're trying to prove. Um, Anastasia and I are the two people who do the pottery for our site. And I can instantly look at a pot and not just because I'm the one who made it, but looking at the design elements, because many of our pots in shape are very much the same right but our design elements that we use to you know For decorate that or pottery decorating. or do the rim allows us to be able to tell the difference between whether it was an anastasia pot <laughs> or a roger pot kind of like a signature in a way. exactly yeah. exactly but thank you uh for joining us and watching our video please uh leave a comment like subscribe even share um but all we ask is you keep your comments polite <laughs> okay, it's you can stop saying dog yeah. randomly. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had to get the point across. We yeah. have so much fun. You weren't listening to her, you were thinking. I was. I was. Um, but thank you for joining us and watching our video today. Um, please uh, like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, all we ask is that you keep the comments nice, uh, nice and polite. Do you want to do it again?